white collar boxing has obviously been around for years, and it's always been sort of conveyed as this sort of how big's your willy competition in an office. I signed up to this uh, on a drunken night out in January. Um, had a tussle in a, in a famous South West London nightclub uh, with one of the organisers. Um, and little did I know two days later, I would have uh, an enrolment sheet to Fight Night London 2018. So the first three weeks were pretty gruelling. I really put you to the test, making sure you were fit enough. And then uh, talking you through the basic moves, how to jab, how to cross. Working you ridiculously hard on the bags, building some muscle memory. And you build up these horrible blisters all over your hands. And you wake up in the morning and you just ache. So my alarm goes off at 4.45. Uh, I am then up, I go to work. I then leave work between uh, 6 and 7 in the evening. I then go directly to the gym. I train for two hours. I then come home, eat, go to sleep, and then get up again and do it all again. And I think that the real shift, the real physical challenge was that lifestyle change, moving from very social, being in the pub most days, sort of just having a couple of pints, to a full-on fitness regime whereby I was working out six days a week. When Al first came in, uh, he was, I mean, he was carrying a little bit extra weight, he hadn't trained in a while. We got started on sort of like high intensity drills, got his fitness up, working him through the runs, which he did struggle with. It's difficult, I mean, the balancing the, the work and the and the boxing. I'm going to spend my whole day out my desk thinking about boxing. It's basically taken over my whole life. The extent that they put you through to, I mean, there are people being sick, there are people crying, people just don't turn up because they think it's just too much. And there were dropouts and then people get used to it. And then that was the first three weeks and then they put you in a ring and then everything changes. And the famous saying is everyone's got a plan, everyone thinks they're good at boxing. And then as soon as someone fucking throws the right hand at you, you know about it. Lucky enough to get one my first Saturday sparring, square on the nose from a big 95 kilo southpaw, and now uh, I learned pretty quickly that you don't want to get one of those again. When I take a beating, which happens rather a lot, but it's not even a beating as such, it's two or three hard shots. It takes at least a day, a day and a half to really feel like back to full fitness. I'd say 99% of anyone that goes into a boxing ring in a white collar fight has only ever got something to prove. I'm not going to lie, before I get in the ring, I don't like it. I get very nervous. And actually often sort of thinking or trying to craft ways of, of getting out of it. And thinking you're standing there, you're watching some guy get beaten. And you go, oh, maybe I don't want to be in there. But actually when I'm in there, it's again that competitive streak that runs about as centrally as it possibly can comes out and I realise that actually that's really where I want to be, especially if there's a sniff that I think that I'm going to win. That's what I love. Well, I've been training him twice a week. He's went from having not much fitness to getting really fit. He's also got a little bit of an injury, so we've done a little bit of work with that. I dislocated my left shoulder playing rugby. When put under extreme stress, uh, it pops out rather easily. I mean, the shoulder originally didn't have any impact on the boxing. I started to do a lot more sparring that actually when my shoulder was met with some force, it popped out on a couple of occasions, especially it was on my left arm, which obviously guides the jab. He's got a long-standing shoulder problem that's been highlighted through the, the training camp that he's been doing. And, you know, I think that that will definitely be a factor on the night. I think we've done enough to try and ensure that won't happen. I mean, there is a risk of it happening. It happens in boxing quite a lot. He's trained very hard, but at the same time, I think that, that training schedule has definitely put his body under a bit of duress, and he's picked up a few little niggles and injuries along the way. I'd approve that um, not a, a sloppy beer drinking, smoking, stop I'm actually still an athlete. If I lose, is my shoulder going to be an excuse now? If I lose, I lose. I hope that I lose to a better fighter. If I do lose, that makes it all right. I always feel that, even though I always get angry when I lose, if you lose to a better team, it always feels better than if you threw it away yourself. You have no idea who your opponent is until the weigh-in comes around. So the eight-week fight camp uh, runs and you spend uh, seven and a half weeks of that not in the know of who you're fighting. Our fighters are, are definitely 
more technically advanced than the fighters in the other camp. So we're really going to try and put the pressure on and expose those sort of technical deficiencies. And what that will do is that will put Al's body under you know, ultimate pressure on the night. Yeah, I'm nervous to see my opponent. I mean, he could be six foot four and ripped, for all I know. You can win or lose, I think, at a, a, a win. You can think about it too much, about what they look like and, and how big they were and, and how fit they look. And so I'll overthink every single movement that is made this evening. But, hey, that's the nature of how it goes. I'm looking forward to it. I just want to see how tall he is. I was going to psych him out, and if he asked me on the podium if I fought before, I'd say, yeah, I've fought six fights before. See how he feels. He'll shit himself overnight. So, ladies and gentlemen, in the red corner, please welcome Al the Double Fly Smallwood! Just stand, just stand, just stand on it, it'll, it'll wake up. Al the Double Five is weighing in at 81.7 kilograms! There he is. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And facing. I mean, imagine if you turn up and you've got on the scales and you look at you, the other guy, and he's ripped. I mean, that, that must be pretty disheartening, generally. Here comes Anthony stepping up to the scales. He's got 80 feet. It's 78, exactly, ladies and gentlemen. 78 kilos. And now they will face off. They will face off against each other. Oh! Looked him in the eye, looked him up and down, saw what he was about. Fancy my chances, I think. It was good to see Al's opponent for the first time. He looks in good shape, but my God, would I love him to lose tomorrow. I like my opponent. He looks pretty lean and a little bit taller, um, but I'm considerably heavier, which is, which is a pretty good sign, I think. He, he's nervous, he's done all this work, he's told a lot of people about it, a lot of people are going to be there. I have no doubt that he'll turn up on the day and he'll do a good job, I'm sure. I hope. <laughs> do we have some people ready? Nervous, excited, a bit of everything really at the moment, so I'm feeling. Looking forward to the fight and looking forward to it being over. Thank fuck. It's the last time putting these bad boys on. Nerves, you know, needless to say, is gonna be a major factor. Problem is, those nerves can take over and they can sap your energy rather than enhance your energy. Probably straight punches will get him through. That is his first fight, so all the boxing skills probably just going to go out the window. I don't mind getting hit with jabs, they're fine. Just got to get myself underneath. That's what matters, especially on these sort of white collar boxing shows. The ones who put the work in will definitely see it through. This shot, the jab here, I'm in here. If he's still standing off that, I'll be surprised. The warm-up room is where the game starts, the heart starts going. You start having a real think about how you're going to fight and what you're going to do. Ladies and gents, next up, please welcome into the ring, fight at the red corner, he is now the double fight. I mean, obviously, there was a little bit of animosity and we were both there to do a job, but I didn't feel that when he came in, I thought, oh, I've got this fight. You look over at the guy that you've got to spend the next six minutes fighting. 
the whole thing is quite gladiatorial. The nerves haven't stopped as such as a case of I just didn't really have a chance to think about them. These next two minutes are probably the longest two minutes I've ever had. A pretty bullish first up. Yeah, obviously a bit of adrenaline has got to me here. So he did a few things that I hadn't had much experience with. One of them was the right hook. He was ducking under my jab and just hammering his right hand into the side of my head. The end of the first round, pretty knackered, just trying to get some air in. Well, I was worried here. This, it was a tough round. It's really important to have your trainer in the corner, because he sort of says, right, you know, you need to sort this out, you need to do this, you need to throw one, two, stop throwing a jab. It was okay, I didn't have to complicate anything. Um, I had a pretty low guard, so I thought that i keep trying to execute that. You see him wince after that one landed, and he's backing away onto the ropes. There was a period of about 10 seconds where I thought I had nothing else. I couldn't throw a punch, I couldn't hold my hands up. First two rounds, me. There's no questions. He didn't land anything clean, didn't land anything that hurt. That's the reality of it. But I didn't think too much about it. I knew if I kept my straight shots coming, I just, just threw as many as I could at him. I'll just do that and see what happens. He landed a nice uppercut there, remember that one. Suddenly felt like I had a bit more energy than he had. Landed a few right hands, and that gave me a bit more room. The ego got the better of me. I was out there to, to please the crowd. It was just a big relief. I wasn't surprised, but I was, as I said, I wasn't sure that it was going to be me. You know, when I finished the fight, I wasn't, didn't think I'd definitely won it. So looking at Al when I finished the fight, I just felt sort of grateful. Not grateful, but just respectful, I guess. I do feel that I fought well in the first two rounds and managed to just about hold myself together in the third, so I feel that I might have clinched it, but at the end of the day, the referee's decision is final, and I respect that, and I respect my opponent enormously. I'd like to fight again for redemption. I feel that the hard work didn't quite reap the rewards that it might have done, um, and if anything, that I've learned that, that these things don't come as easy as you might have liked, and the fairy tale isn't always um, doesn't always end as you might seem, so there's definitely another day in me. <laughs>